Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome to the Oracle of Atlantis. We're going to get into the full moon in Aquarius reading. The full moon is on September 19th, 2024. It is entering in Aquarius and shifting into Pisces. Said to be a good time for catching fish, the sturgeon moon. So this being Leo season can be a time of satisfying ourselves with the Aquarius energy is collaborating with others. Our balance between teamwork and individuality. So with the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Oracle, the cards that wanted to come out for this um, full moon in Aquarius, we have Gemini's energy with curiosity, intellect, network, and learning, as well as house number eight, which belongs to Scorpio. Transformation, karma, fairness, fears, and legacies. So what I would get for this is there's almost a change or a transformation in the way we network or communicate perhaps even our beliefs, philosophy, philosophies, karmic returns, things of that nature. So I am going to break down into each planetary reading. Some signs will be doubled with another, like Gemini and Virgo are ruled by Mercury. So the Mercury reading will be for those two zodiacs to get into what we need to know at this time for each sign. So let's dive in. So the moon, which is Cancer's ruling planet, satisfy emotional needs, nurture self and others. I am going to connect Pisces energy. So Pisces, I guess, will end up with two readings here. So um, just because the moon used to rule Pisces, that was the original zodiac. So the moon is a symbol for spirit. It represents the deepest eternal core of who you are and the interior world of your soul. It's your subconscious, which speaks through psychic revelations and bone-knowing intuition. It's the watery womb from which you came and your sense of home and security. Mother Moon is nostalgic in her timeless depths. She's tethered to the past, and with her porous memory, she encodes your emotional responses to life. Soul, memory in the past, sense of home and security, the mother. Your emotional response to life, how you nurture yourself and others, psychic revelations, bone-knowing intuition, your experience of the feminine energy. So it's kind of interesting because I'm just seeing this duality kind of going on with the moon representing Pisces, which is symbolized by the two koi fish, right? The koi fish can represent dream and fantasy and perhaps sorting the like illusion from truth type of energy. Um, the moon being Cancer's energy is kind of very much the same symbol as the koi fish when you really think about it. They follow each other, right? The yin and yang symbol. <laughs> That's funny, I've never... I've never really even considered the Cancer symbol to be the yin and yang symbol. That's interesting. Anyway, I was kind of getting more of the feminine energy of the moon over here and a little more of the masculine energy of the moon. Um, just because manas came up the other day for me, which is, I believe, is it not the Nordic belief that the moon is the father? I believe that's manas, I'm pretty sure is. Well, manas is. I think connected to Odin in the actual runes, but. Manas is um, the moon god, and so Sa Sawilo is the sun goddess. Energy, ener anyway, the energy of this card is speaking of the moon being predominantly feminine, which could be true, the receptor part. However, the next energy coming out, we do have the energy of Mars, right? Um... So there's also kind of this masculine influence, maybe even a shift with this house number eight. 
being more on what I am introducing as the masculine side, which is funny because it has the feminine kitty. <laughs> uh, anyway, maybe none of it's important. Maybe it's all important. But we're going to dive into the Light Sears Tarot and take a look at the advice, the situation, the energy for Cancer and or Pisces, please and thank you. C or sorry, Cancer and Pisces. We have Scorpio's energy coming out again with a death and rebirth. Kind of reminds me of um is it She-Ra? I think it might be She-Ra. The like isn't she like a mystic or something? The the evil guy's psychic or whatever. I don't know. I'm sure someone knows what I'm talking about. The card of death, which is Scorpio's energy, that house number eight, the transitions. Death and rebirth, I allow myself to let go of the past in order to add energy to new beginnings. Cycles of transformation, rebirth, transition, change, new beliefs, newfound awareness, endings, a symbolic death, an initiation process. Angel number 44. I think 44 came out for Leo's energy as well. So there could be new light returning. Um, you may want to look into angel number 44. This can be connected to Cancer's house as well, as well as Scorpio's um, house number 8. 4 plus 4 being 8. House number four belongs to Cancer in the first place, which is all about the home, the family. You are on the cusp of a massive transformation, and it's time to mourn the end of one phase with celebrating the birth of another. This energy of transmutation and rebirth signifies a beautiful metamorphosis that will allow you to expand your conscious and consciousness and move closer to your own divine essence. I'm kind of getting the energy of a water trine, which trines symbolize some sort of harmony, right? Just because we have Cancer and or a little bit of Pisces coming on, right? I did bring Pisces into this reading and we already have Scorpio's energy. We have Scorpio's energy twice. So it's, that would be the water trine, which could symbolize some sort of emotional um, harmony or contentment, a rebirth of sorts. A cycle in your life, a relationship, a belief, a career path, or an outdated plan for the future is coming to an, in an inevitable end. Deep breath in if this scares you, sweet light. This change is needed. Know that this card urges you to please urges you to release what is already losing energy and to focus on things that are already gaining momentum. Welcome the possibility of something new and allow the phase to come to a graceful end. Look toward the magic of this newfound horizon because underneath its morbid exterior, the death card heralds exciting times filled with the brightness of so much potential. New light awaits. Allow your, I allow myself to let go of the past in order to add energy to new beginnings. So that is the affirmation. I allow myself to let go of the past in order to add energy to new beginnings. Oh, that's interesting. I love that. The underlying energy we have, the sun card, right? The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar about tomorrow. Very much Leo's energy. And didn't I bring up something with Leo's energy? I forget what it was. But the sun brings illumination, joy, gratitude. Maybe um, bringing in that gratitude of some sort will bring some sort of joy for you. So for the closing message, I'm going to pull a card from the Avalon Magic. Closing words of wisdom for the moon's energy for Cancer Pisces. Closing words of wisdom. Make peace with the wildness within you and all of Mother Earth's creations. Oh. 
Oh, that's a unicorn. It's the last unicorn. That was one of my friend's favorite movies when I was young, when we were younger. It's the last unicorn. Perhaps is your holy grail here. Sorry, I was just drawn to this card. Heal through changing your story, begin in this moment, and don't look back. The Ace of Cups, which was interesting because I think it was the last reading, which was Taurus and Libra, Venuses, that had the Ace of Swords. That kind of mental energy with, like, it's like head and heart here, a rebirth, an illumination of some sort. So very beautiful in the long run, even though there may be some darker travesties have been happening for you at this time, Cancer and or Pisces. So I hope this reading resonates. I hope it gives you some guidance. Gently place your feet on the path you were meant to travel. If it does resonate, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.